Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the studio this evening. And as as is usual, we shall be working on more of this uh, uh, punchcraft locomotive. Um, I think that's the colour I was working with. Looks like it. <laughs> Let me check the colour numbers. 29. 29. It's supposed to be the same colour. Nope, that one isn't. And... That one isn't. Okay. So we're working with this one. Colour number 29. <coughs> I'm hoping I've got enough thread with this uh, with this reel to finish that sky off. It'll be nice if I do. As I don't, I don't think I. Well, I might have another. Uh, reel of this shade but I will have to go looking for it so if there's anybody watching that hasn't watched before doesn't know what you're looking at you're looking at punchcraft effectively a miniature rug as this technique is very similar to the way in which they do make uh, rugs and some carpets only they generally do it a heck of a lot faster and use a lot more needles than I'm about to so I'm just swapping glasses which will help me see a bit better and then we'll start sticking this needle through this material Right. Okay, so the first part of this is going to involve me in creating a rounded edge around this top part of the uh, the work here. Unfortunately, in doing that, I'll be working right up against the hoop, and I'll be working on the other side, which will actually make it a little bit difficult for you to see what I'm doing. But uh, hopefully, that won't be for too long. Right, and I am just wondering how brave I am and how confident I am that this is uh, sufficient and I'm not. So I'm going to do it in small sections or in sections. If I do this in sections, um, Murphy will probably assist at that point and I will have sufficient thread which is fine um, but uh, also uh, if I don't then um, have sufficient thread and I do have to change either to a different shade or a different reel then if I do it in small blocks then the difference will look natural if there is a difference in shade than it would do otherwise if I were to uh, um, try and do it all in one go. So if you haven't been watching before you, and you've just seen this, a little about what the image is. The image is of a British uh, railway steam locomotive from mm, somewhere around the uh, late, I believe around the late 1950s, early 1960s. Uh, it's a class of locomotive which is called the A4 Pacific, uh, which was built to be a streamlined um, engine and uh, train coaches uh, for, um, I think it was something like London to Edinburgh, but I'm not actually sure of that. But it was intended for the long distance runs. Uh, to be a smooth, comfortable, fast journey time. And uh, these locomotives were uh, were quite fast. Especially, well, even for now, they're relatively fast. Uh, this one, which is called the Mallard, uh, was, uh, or is, the uh, world 
steam speed record holder at um, I don't know if the record's 125 or 126 miles per hour um, I believe it's 125 even though the locomotive did actually do 126 miles an hour Uh, and they regularly achieve sort of speeds well in excess of 100 miles an hour uh, on the journey. So, uh, you know, that compares well with today, even today's um, services. There were a lot of others in the class, uh, but uh, I don't know. Not much about them to be honest. Of course, Mel had been the most, or one of the most famous, because of the speed, the speed record. Now I just want to cut off a th the thread that's here because it gets in the way. understand when these engines were running they used to be shall we say an informal competition to actually be able to do the run uh, non-stop literally uh, non-stop so they would do uh, they do employ all sorts of tricks and techniques to do that like uh, crawling up to signals and uh, you know to make sure that they didn't actually stop and the signals would change in time for them to continue And indeed, I think the um, the last locomotive that actually sort of uh, is recorded as having done that is relatively recently. I think was the the Flying Scotsman did that um, within the last sort of five to ten years, shall we say? Um, it's not something which is particularly very easy to do. Reaper, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. So what I'm doing is creating a, a, a rounded edge on the other side of here, and I'm doing that by varying the depth of the loops that I'm creating on the on the uh, face side, starting with uh, little tiny ones, and then getting uh, uh, progressively longer until I reach the uh, the depth of loops that I've used all for the rest of the picture. And that creates a nice rounded rounded edge which sort of finishes off the image quite nicely. Um, it is indeed uh, Fear Reaper, thank you very much for asking, although uh, it's affecting my voice as you can hear, it's not quite um, back to normal. Oh, the sore throat's gone. And uh, how are you today? Right. I can now work across here and fill in this area. Fluffy Twiglet, <laughs> welcome to the uh, studio this evening, and thank you for returning, uh, retaining your purple colour. That's made it really nice and easy to see. Uh, 
I'm sorry about that for you, April. I hope it's better this evening. <laughs> um, I've just changed, so this is a this is I ran didn't run out. I, I finished off uh, one reel last night. Uh, the uh, the thread status tonight is good at the moment. It's a brand new reel. Um, I am guessing with myself as to whether I'm going to have enough, and indeed you're also <laughs> welcome to take a guess as to whether I'm going to have enough with this one reel to finish this whole. Uh, rest of the sky off. Um, I don't have another of this shade out which kind of surprises me because I thought I did. I thought I had three. Or maybe I've used two of them already. Um, so I might have to, uh, uh, if I run out I'll have to dig into my boxes of thread and see if I've got any more. Um, and if I don't, then I've got two choices of either uh, changing the colour or ordering some and waiting for it to arrive. Which is why I'm sort of maintaining it in this sort of horizontal direction. So that what I could do is switch to the slightly darker blue that I do have. Um, as though you're getting further up in the sky so the sky gets uh, a little bit darker. So I can always do that rather than uh, go looking or, or ordering more thread. Ah, uh, yes it is. But the, um, these two reels at least, if not. You've got me thinking now. I could have sworn I had three, so maybe I've used two. Um, I do keep the empty reels to uh, to help me. So. Uh, 16... No, I could have sworn I had three of these. Hmm, I could have sworn I had three, but I seem to only be able to find two. So, um, um, I thought I'd ordered three, so maybe I've left one in the box. Uh, when I uh, before I started this, I did order some more of this blue, um, expecting to get sort of the you know the three reels that I believe I ordered, all of the same shade, which should be enough to do the sky. So I did try this time. why when you buy uh, wallpaper and things like that they tell you to uh, to buy it all at the same time as much as you need it because you might not get any any of the same shade a little bit later on
Uh, no, I haven't. It was um, Monday, I think, was the last time, and um, he was having problems with this uh, with the PC, I believe. Um, something uh, going wrong with it, which was uh, causing him to get a little bit exasperated with it, I think. So I haven't looked. Uh, I haven't uh, dropped in on Lost Stream to see if he was uh, he was hanging around there because that's where you'll find him if he's um, if he is around. Sure, he's doing fine though. I think it, I think it was kind of more of a rage quit when he when he stops. So uh, yeah, he's either sorting his PC out or just um, saying blow it. I'm not going to bother. Because he does have, as you, as you know, he does have this sort of hybrid machine, which is a an Apple Mac in, of some kind. Uh, which is um, he's got Windows loaded on it, and it's he was I know he was having problems because of uh, the way in which it sort of is this hybrid sort of machine. Uh, okay, I didn't. I had the stream on. I just wasn't. I didn't actually have the the um, the sound up, so I was kind of watching it between doing something else. And uh, so I wasn't, I wasn't, to be honest, I wasn't taking a lot of attention. Um, and then I just noticed he, he, he closed the stream and I was reading back through chat and realised he'd had problems. Well, of course, he's, um, it's not that long ago his, uh, his friend died, so it's taken him a while to get back into uh, feeling like doing anything. Yeah, indeed.
have you changed your um, your um, avatar picture, uh, Fluffy Twiggler? I was just wondering whether I could trust you with something. Oh dear, I just had a, I was watching somebody um, create a video at work today and um, I, I, I emailed them about it, uh, about the video that they created because um, they had a, uh, they, were, they were demonstrating something on, on screen and uh, talking whilst they were doing it and uh, they, um, they had a face cam and I can't remember exactly it must have been placed sort of halfway between two monitors um, because um, as the uh, as the video progressed you could see that they were actually sort of looking at what was on the monitors and they were doing this sort of thing doing everything but looking at the camera they never looked at the camera once sorry they did twice <laughs> and it, it really looked like they were trying to avoid looking at, at you as the person. Um, and uh, it, I was just laughing because it suddenly struck me that I was doing exactly the same thing. I was looking up at my screen and looking down and I wasn't actually looking at the camera. Ah, Fear Reaper. Are you trying to guess? Yes, I just realised you would. <laughs> it's not difficult to know, is it, really? Ah, uh, dear. Uh, it's a Friday. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit tired. I was kind of nodding off before the stream. It's amazing how the stream wakes you up, uh, to be honest. And, uh, yes, it just occurred to me. I think Fuffy has gone gone away and doing something else, which is perfectly okay. You know, I don't mind. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not able to chain people to the monitors to watch. Yet. <laughs> But if there is anybody watching that isn't following and is enjoying what you're looking at, and uh, I, this isn't the only crafts that I do, um, then uh, of course you are welcome to if you wish to do so, and I do appreciate it if you choose to follow. Um, if you don't, that's okay. 
as I just said, it's not um, it's not mandatory. Um, but I also do uh, uh, tweet uh, occasionally about art and, and the stream, and uh, I do tweet when I go live. So if you just want to know when I go live, you can uh, you can follow me on Twitter, and you'll get a message uh, when I do go live on an evening. At the moment, I'm hoping we'll be able to finish this tonight. Not sure though. It's uh, it can be deceptive just how long this uh, this stuff can take sometimes. Since we're not uh, we're not going we're not working in uh, in in a fast time video. I'm going to adopt that number nomenclature. Nomenclature. I'm going to adopt that naming convention now for for uh, um, for time lapse videos. They're fast time videos. And if I do finish this, we'll be doing some jewelry tomorrow. If I don't finish this, we'll be doing this tomorrow. And I am also hoping to get my website completed soon. That way I can uh, better show off some of the stuff that I've all I've done in the past. And that we've done on stream. Amongst one or two other things that are going to go on there. Like a very nice picture of a um, ring from Lord of the Rings, uh, but with my name on it instead. Kindly created by uh, one excellent person on this stream this evening. I'm doing something silly. I'm going to be okay with doing it, but uh, I'm going in the wrong direction. So I shall start going in the right direction. I started doing the diagonal just down here to fill in the small space and carried on without thinking about it. I want to go horizontal then if I am forced to change uh, to a different um, uh, bobbin of thread um, I won't be bothered about the any differences in shading uh, between the two uh, or shades between the two bobbins. No, I don't think I post the meals either. <laughs> oh dear. But I, I am going to. Uh, there will be links on Dave to to sign up if you want to know about changes that you know, as I post new pictures, for example, on the website. Um, maybe I should put one on there for meals. You know, we can uh, we can update that sort of every ten seconds. <laughs> And I guess I guess I ought to explain <laughs> explain your comment now about and my my reaction to it, shouldn't I? Uh, one of my uh, standard phraseologies with respect to Twitter is that I I tweet when I go live, not when I have my breakfast or lunch or some other uh, event like that. Um, <laughs> just as an indication that it's you know, I don't I don't really. To give out tri what what I would call trivial tweets, you know. I'm just walking out the house. Um, I'm just going to get in the car. These sorts of things that you do see some people do, and 
and I'd be wary of following somebody who did that just because I don't you can't see the wood for the trees if nothing else um, so <laughs> it was just my way of indicating that uh, uh, any tweets would be uh, or should be considered relatively um, relevant either to art or to the to the stream itself um, but uh, <laughs> yeah you want to make your web app yes I want to finish my uh, website there's a couple of things I need to uh, I need to do and um, because uh, what I want to to do on there as well is make it possible uh, for people to uh, potentially buy um, some of the art pieces if I put them up for sale I need to sort of work out exactly yeah um, it's an easy enough thing to do but I need to sort of work out the uh, the, the mechanism and the uh, the way to actually price some of these things up and what have you because I'm not uh, I'm not about to um, load a full web shop into into my website so I've got limited options What's actually amazing me about the website is just how long it, <laughs> like everything else, just how long it takes to do. It sort of feels like it ought to be a really, really quick thing to to do. And uh, you know, whilst I have you know, hard coded uh, web pages in the past, I've kind of only done one or two. Uh, and never, well, I'm not hard coding this one. I'm using a content management system, but. Um, once you start talking about 20 or 30 pages, it's surprising just how long it takes. Ah, 3D bloke! Uh, yeah, well, that's the best way, though, is to actually try things out um, and play about with them, um, uh, Fear Reaper. Welcome, Free, to the studio this evening. How are you doing? Um, as um, uh, Fear Reaper mentioned, you've not been streaming all week. Is that down? to the PC or just not felt like it so that's the uh, that's the section we've just done and that kind of looks like I've missed a bit out but that's sort of white <laughs> white steam and hopefully it'll become a bit more obvious when I get the bit around the top but we are getting low on that thread so let's um, carry on I take it you've not finished Hovis yet then? In fact I, um, I gather he's, he's perhaps due for a, a, a rename, Horrible Hovis. Uh, so to hear that 3D, uh, well, I hope things do improve. Jasper5020, welcome to the studio this evening. Thank you very much for your comment. <laughs> That's the idea of the Xenomorph, isn't it? <laughs> if you're that close to him, <laughs> you um, it's too late. Uh, 
right, let me cut this thread off before I get too close to it and it starts getting awkward. I am hoping Jasper uh, 5020 to uh, to finish this this evening, but um, we shall see. So you might you will you'll have difficulty seeing what I'm doing at the moment, but I'm just because I'm working right up against the corner of the hoop. But I'm again uh, rounding off the edge, uh, uh, about an inch and a half of the edge. <laughs> What's the phraseology? I've never met a xenomorph, a xenomorph that didn't want to eat me. Yeah. Okay, Fear Reaper, no problem. Good luck with the lesson. And thank you very much, uh, Jasper5020. Uh, That's the edge bit done, so I can now carry on with uh, this bit of the sky. So I've got to make sure I keep the material out of the way. I don't want to punch it through two um, two layers of the material. That will make would make it awkward trying to uh, to get it off. Mm -hmm. What is it about my stream 
that Twitch doesn't like feeding it back to me. It keeps stopping. And yet I can watch any other stream like 3Ds or anybody else. And I can watch it for several hours and it won't freeze once. Get my own about every 20 minutes. You have the same problem too, yeah. Well, uh, the, uh, the tr <laughs> kind of um, part of my uh, problem though is I just upgraded to Windows 10 last weekend. So I'm running on 10. So I don't actually know whether it's Windows 10, um, some incompatibility between, uh, I'm running both of these in Chrome, so Chrome and Windows 10, or um, I think they've just upgraded the um, the viewer a little bit as well. And uh, uh, Seven's all right, eight's all right, ten's all right. I don't see any reason to go back, to be honest. Um, it's faster. It starts up a lot easier. The start menu is different, but apart from that, uh, you know, the start menu, the taskbar is different, and there's one or two, you know, bits like that. But I don't really see the point in reverting. Essentially, there's you know the core the core stuff behind it. There's not a lot of difference, and so it's all cosmetic stuff. And cosmetic stuff can be changed if it's really yeah, really necessary. But I mean, there's certain things that I you know I think I find annoying. But there again, I don't ever remember some of them whether I could do them in Windows Seven, which is what I used to use on this machine, or Oh, on Windows 8, which I used on other machines. So, uh, one of the nice things is going to be that I'll actually have all the machines on the same uh, same OS, which will make a change. But there's a couple of couple of things to do with putting stuff on menus that maybe is probably more of a bug and certain. Uh, it has to be an application to go in the start menu and stuff like that, but. Um, the main one that's kind of annoying is if you if I've got something I've got three monitors so if I've got something playing like Twitch for example full screen on one of the monitors if I start another application it it reverts the full screen back down to uh, well it just you know reverts the full screen back and that's um, that that's kind of annoying it's kind of like, I've got another two screens here machine you know. I don't need you to drop the full screen menu, the full screen viewing back down, just to display this other application. But mm, I kind of understand if you've got only one screen, but it, it's hard for the operating. Well, the operating system knows how many screens you've got. It knows which screen you open the application on, and leave my app alone. <laughs> Um, the um, 
The upgrade to 10, I, I understand in your machine especially, the upgrade to 10 on mine, uh, I did it on a sacrificial machine, uh, which was an old laptop, which we weren't otherwise using because it was um, his battery shot. Uh, and, and that went quite smoothly. It took about an hour to do on that machine and uh, it worked quite nicely and the machine actually also was a lot faster because it was an, it was kind of a bit underpowered anyway. It was running an i5 uh, but it's only got four gigs of memory so it was um, a little bit underpowered but it ran a lot smoother with uh, 10 on it. Now okay yeah a new operating system it's not been quite as you know it rewrote a lot of the stuff that will slow it down but it was still uh, relatively uh, a speedy machine and the start up and shut down is is a lot quicker on it um and so i um i i i uh, i've done mine uh, my main machine here and uh, so far as a the few quirks Actually, one of the quirks was the Ethernet card. Um, I never, it, it never bothered um, turning off the wake on LAN uh, on this machine because it never woke up from the LAN. I didn't send special packets out. But with Windows 10, it was wake on LAN whenever you receive a packet. <laughs> so it kept, kept. It took me, it took me a while to realise what was going on, and then actually to turn to turn the power. Um, uh, power start off the off the card, but that was a little bit amusing. Of course, I still can't. Oh no, I was about to say I still can't understand why um, the machine was getting packets since it's on the switch. But um, of course, there are machines on my land that broadcast. So. Mm. <laughs> Free's from the UK as well. We both are. I'm from somewhat more north than uh, Free is. Uh, I'm from Yorkshire. So I'm actually in the, about the middle of the UK. And uh, we Yorkshiremen have a reputation, which you sometimes will see on the stream. And uh, the, the, our reputation sort of is, um, is in comparison to the Scots, who, as an archetype, uh, shall we say, very frugal with their money. Uh, you know, uh, their purses do not open very often. Uh, but Yorkshiremen uh, have been described, usually by other Yorkshiremen, as being tight-fisted Scotsmen. <laughs> so, and that kind of, uh, I kind of uh, subscribe to that in a way because I hate wasting materials when I'm doing art of any kind. Like, you know, thread here. I'll go. I'll use this thread to the very last. But I won't, you know, I won't, um, I won't go others. A couple of feet left I'll just throw it away I'll use it hmm. I didn't know Win 7 could actually control the fans I thought that was all that was all just delegated to the uh, to the motherboard And if it was controlling the fans, I'm surprised it wasn't reading any of the temperature sensors. I just suppose that's that's just one of the facilities available in the motherboard driver, I guess. That's something I didn't know. Okay. 
It was only recognising the GPU fans, it was turning them off. <laughs> that sounds like some interesting logic, does that? <laughs> uh, I'm going to cut that off. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of knew you could control the GPU fans. Uh, I've sort of come across that before now, but um, never the motherboard fans. I'm running water cooling anyway, so um, I don't have any fans um, connected to the system. They're um, they're actually independently controlled uh, by a, a little computer that sits inside and um, just measures the temperature sensors. And uh, drives the fans on the on the radiators. Actually, I do have. Oh no, it drives the case fans as well. So I do have a couple of or more case fans just to exhaust the hot air. Yeah, yeah. Interesting language. I can imagine some of that language. I'm looking at this reel and trying to decide if I'm going to have enough to finish that section. Hmm. And I really don't know. Okay. Well, hmm. I shall be conservative. I shall do a little bit of uh, just to do it in small, small stages. Just do about that much in one go and then I can do a little bit more after that. I begin to think you might be right, uh, 3D Block and Rihanna DeWitt 2001. Welcome back, nice to see you again. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you've uh, managed to uh, find some free time then, uh, Rihanna Dewey. So was that the computer problems you were having um, uh, earlier this week then, uh, Free, was uh, overheating and, uh, and shutting down on you?
Uh, Brock7, thank you very much for uh, following the studio. That is most kind of you, and I do appreciate you doing that. Welcome to the studio. Say hello in chat if you feel like it. The guys that are there are quite friendly and don't bite very often. <laughs> uh, Uh, must have something to do with the state of the um, outside temperature, I think, for me. <laughs> I, thought, oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, that and that might um, have some suggestion as to how insulated your house is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yes, if you're here for not friendly reasons, they bite hard. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I kind of, uh, I kind of know that. I understand that uh, feeling, uh, free. with a completely obscure observation because I was I was just thinking it would be interesting if uh, xenomorphs were a bit like angels uh, when trolls came around that would be quite an interesting thing is to release the xenomorph but there again you may have ended up with some um, rapidly deteriorating components if it wasn't an aluminium case He's quite good at it as well, Jasper. It's worth um, worth checking out. If he decides to stream tonight in about three quarters of an hour, he'll uh, he'll be live, so you'll be able to uh, uh, to see. have a look and see if I've got another um, another reel of this bloke
So I'm going to start and do is just level this out a little bit because I've got a it's going to be cockeyed. And if I'm going to end up having to change shades, I want it to be a fairly sort of straightish line. Because that's kind of how it would look like in in real life if that happened. Well, not that the sky ran out of shades, but um, it tends to be a a fairly horizontal line if you do get sort of a difference in sky yeah, sky colour. Uh, H1Z, it's not one that I have watched some of it, but it's not one that I've particularly uh, struck me as being something I'd be interested in playing. Isn't that one? And it seems to have had sort of fairly mixed reviews as well. of exile just that that name strikes me as familiar is that one of the cyan games um mist games um jasper um what games do i play um relatively few um and most of them yeah most well most of them are sort of simulators i i Quite like playing um, Euro Truck Simulator, Farming Simulator, Train Simulator. Uh, they're the sort of main uh, main ones. Um, I've been playing a bit of Factorio recently, but essentially that's that's about it. Apart from the the Mist games, I do like playing those. I don't play them very often, but. Uh, um, I do enjoy sort of adventure games like that. Um, actually, most of, most of the games I enjoy are ones where there's generally some sort of, uh, other than the simulators I've just mentioned, where there's some sort of adventure element to it. So I've kind of enjoyed playing things like the Doom series, whilst that's shooting a lot of things. Um, it's... Uh, yeah, you know, there was a lot of exploring in there. You know, find secret rooms and things like that. And I tend to, I tend to enjoy that more than just shooting something just because it's in front of you. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there's quite a few games like that as uh, as well. Free. I'm just trying to think what else I might. Uh, Okay, so much to, to the diablo. 
The um, there was um, a Cyan game in the Mist series. It's something at um, Exile or something in Exile, um, and I can't. So that's kind of what uh, what struck me. Um, trying to think what else. I've got a. Mm, I've got London Underground Simulator loaded on my machine here, which uh, my wife got me that as a present, and I enjoy playing that from time to time. Um, oh, what's the other one? Oh, tell you what, I, I, I kind of like playing, and that's the. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of the series now. Uh, again, it's an it's, it's kind of half explorative stuff, but the the Umbrella Corporation, the um, oh. It will annoy me now until I remember it or one of you guys mention what it is. That series of games anyway. <laughs> um. Although I, I kind of uh, prefer that on the either on the Wii or the Wii U. Uh, because of course you can actually shoot things with a you know you with a controller you can point it at the screen and it acts like a gun which um i'm never I, you know, i'm never very good at using a console controller with these with those sorts of games and um i've never used a mouse never used never uh, played them on pc resident evil thank you very much i keep forgetting that You'll make. Okay, I might. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that one's gone over the top of my head, Devry. I've probably forgotten what was going on 30 seconds ago. Or am I just stopping stopping work while I talk again? Oh, train simulator. Ah, okay, underground. Yeah, click. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, I kind of have. I haven't played it for about six months. I, I kind of like... Um, uh, it's one reason why I do like the simulators is, is the fact that um, for things like the, the driving one, uh, the Euro truck or even farm simulator, I can use the wheel uh, to drive it. And I've got the... Um, for the train simulator, I've got, I've got the uh, that train controller unit, which completely changes how the games feel. But, you know, when you when you actually can move um, move an object in in the real world and the game reacts, then it's it it makes it a completely different experience playing the game. Um, it's long time ago when uh, when we had analog TVs uh, and screens with you know CRT screens uh, where you used to be able to get the light guns to um, to fire at uh, at the screen and playing sort of you know, things like H1Z1 if you like that you could do that with where you actually had to aim and fire it would probably be a completely different experience yeah, I gather definitely. Does does your wife do any arts and crafts? Not, uh, not at the moment. She um, she used to make um, candles, but not standard candles. Yeah, she'd um, make uh, what would you call them? Oh, I don't know. Um, she she make rubber moulds of things and then pour pour wax with a um, um, a wick because it, it it's candles only a candle if it's got a wick otherwise it's a wax model um, so you know you might have a I don't know uh, let's say you had a sculpture of of one of the uh, I don't know, one of the monsters out of Doom or something like that. She'd, um, uh, you know, create a, uh, create a, a rubber mould of that 
and then uh, create candles from it and, and paint them. And uh, she kind of had a dabble with actually carving candles as well, but there that's a bit harder to do because you've got to have a lot of hot wax uh, lying around shall we say um, and it's relatively speaking quite hard to keep wax liquid because um, you the, the safe way to do it is to have uh, something like a metal can um, and uh, keep uh, suspend that can in boiling water uh, and then the wax is in the can that way then the wax can can never exceed 100 degrees so it can never set on fire um, and uh, it, it's a, a relatively safe way of um, of heating wax um, but it's um, getting getting metal cans which are deep enough to put candles in to ca uh, to coat them to carve them uh, and so, and wide enough the the expensive shall we say because usually they're made out of copper or you you have to sort of buy a, a a full a full unit at several thousand pounds that will sort of carry six or eight of these cans and so she was kind of dabbling in that but she's not done any for a while yet now and we kind of don't really have her yeah yeah that well, the sort of thing yeah for yeah <laughs> Cast of, cast of your face, yeah. Yeah, covered in plaster. And if you don't get the, if you forget the Vaseline on things like uh, eyebrows, <laughs> then uh, uh, it's interesting, shall we say? Yeah, but anything you can, you know, if if, you, if it will hold liquid, you can uh, more or less make a a mold out of any uh, anything. Um, and uh, uh, you just have to remember that the wax has to come out. Um, now rubber moulds are easy because they stretch and uh, um, plaster moulds are not so bad providing you don't mind breaking the mould. But uh, as, as long as something will physically slide out of something uh, with, a, with candles one of the things you could do was to put the thing in a freezer or a fridge the wax would shrink and then you could just take it out so you know something like this this cup which is sort of um, tapered you know you can put the wax in it might not come out immediately but stick it in a freezer for 10 minutes and, and it'll pop straight out yeah the straws <laughs> uh, I've never done any but I have seen it done on people and as you say with the uh, yeah, the straws up the nose uh, it's a bit of uh, a little bit of sense of, well it wouldn't have been so bad because you 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 wouldn't have been going uh, past the years but it's almost like a little bit of sensory deprivation as well isn't it with because um, you've got to have your eyes closed I'm looking at this thread. I know it's. Not. I'm going to have a look and see if I've got another reel of that. Because if I have, I'll use that. If I haven't, I might change colour at this point. So I'm just going to go off camera a moment. You I'm gonna say you can't see it, but I've got a, I've got a big box of thread here. <laughs> so, oh, I've got none in there. Hmm. I do have plenty of white. I've got three, four, five, six reels in that thing. I've got something here that looks like it might be the right colour. Actually it looks too light. Here yeah, it is. Completely the wrong colour.
Mm. As that's an empty reel, I shall put that over there to remind me to order some more. Um, so what do we have here? 29. Yep, well that's either going to match or it's not. And we shall find out in a moment whether it will or not. It's from an old batch, so... It may be a slightly different colour. I'm now going to get all these back in the uh, back in this box. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's. Um, I can imagine that being really scary, actually, 3D block. Not particularly um, something to joke with, really. I could see myself being inclined to show them what it felt like not to be able to breathe through their nose. Alright, so I've got this thread. Which of course is really hard to tell. I am going to assume it's the same and we'll find out. That's the mentality. Yeah. <laughs> and they were definitely mental. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know it, it would happen in a, it would happen in most uh, schools, I imagine, but it's a good job. It only takes about 30 minutes for the blaster to set, isn't it? Right, okay. Well, here goes. Uh, let's hope I'm lucky. Of course, Murphy will probably have just walked in and I'm not going to be, but we shall see. I'm going to take that chance. I'm going to live dangerously. Or is it YOLO? You only live once. Josie Gallon, uh, 02117. Hi, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for uh, for following. That's most kind of you. <laughs> that is kind of a coincidence, isn't it? I could imagine going up to him now and saying, what would you do if I came up to one of your patients you were operating on and uh, and pinched their nose shut? <laughs> Hi, what am I making? Um, I am making an image of a UK locomotive, which I will quite happily show you in a moment. Just uh, bear with me whilst I just finish uh, this um, 
a small section of, of thread because then I'll cut it off and it'll be easier to show you what I'm doing. Uh, but what I'm actually uh, doing this is a this is an art form called punch craft, which is uh, essentially just creating loops. You're looking what you can see of it of the back side, the working side, uh, but it creates loops on the other side, and uh, it's it's very similar in, in way to, uh, in the way they make rugs and and some carpets, and. Uh, I'm doing it in such a way that I create a pattern of different colours and uh, the picture is of a British steam locomotive from around the 1950s, 1960s. Uh, it's a class of locomotive that was called the A4 which was designed specifically for speed on a long distance run towards Scotland and uh, this one is of a locomotive called Mallard which is the world steam uh, speed record holder at 125 miles an hour uh, and it still holds that record so it's never it's never been beaten okay uh, thank you sorry I put that up to show what I was doing a minute ago and forgot to put it back And I'll tilt it down even a little bit more. Uh, Lager Muffin, welcome to the studio this evening. You love trains. Good, that's um, good to know. Um, I would uh, caution you against shouting though. Uh, in some streams that would have got you timed out. <laughs> but um, I appreciate the enthusiasm. this is the second locomotive then you might uh, you might have enjoyed seeing the other one as well which we did uh, a little while ago which was of a class 66 which is a diesel electric locomotive if you know anything about locos you might know what those are I don't I only know what they are because I've created pictures of them but I just like the locos Yeah, I'll uh, I'll show you the full image shortly, and then uh, I'll just take this back round to where I started. I'll cut the thread off because I don't want to pull uh, pull out the uh, the loops. There's nothing but friction holds the loops in place. They're not sewn in place or glued or anything like that, so it is possible to fairly easily pull them out. So whenever I leave, whenever I take the, the needle away from the uh, the work, I always cut the thread off. the camera back up again now <laughs> so you get to see all of it um, but that's uh, that's currently what it uh, looks like just in the process of finishing off the sky which is just out of frame so the top uh, top bit I'm just working on now is uh, is that sort of blue band that just across the top so we've nearly finished this and that's a thread which is across the uh, the top, so we'll get rid of that. Okay. Um, thank you to both of uh, both of you, Lager Muffin and Joe, and uh, is it Jose or, or Jose uh, Gallon O two one one seven? Thank you. Yes, 
Be a little careful with the caps so you don't get uh, don't get turned out. Um, how did I figure out about this? Um, kind of didn't. I saw it. Um, <laughs> actually, I first saw the art for home on the shopping channel, to be honest. And uh, that's probably 10, 20 years ago. And I just found it. It looked fascinating. And I got a kit. And uh, I liked it. And I got a few more kits. And then I started making my own pictures. And uh, got some different tools. So I can do it with uh, different thread sizes now. Um, so I can use things like cotton. This is This is more of a fluffy thread. But... You do cotton which is um, a lot thinner so you tend to use it on smaller uh, smaller images um, or I've got some some needles some tools that will take uh, uh, knitting wool so I can actually make rugs literally sort of two feet three four feet uh, long rugs same sort of idea um, it's just the same sort of punch just a, just a bigger thing um, and uh, create images on those See you then, Lagamuffin. Nice to see you. Drop in again some other time. Follow if you feel like it, then you'll get notified when I'm live. <laughs> Shameless plug time. <laughs> right, so I'm just... Uh, just creating uh, an edge around the, uh, the side here, which is, it is rounded off on the other side. It creates a neater edge by doing that. And I just I do that by by uh, varying the depth of the sorry varying the length of the loops that are created on the other side. As you are new uh, to the uh, to the stream, uh, Josie Galan, uh, I will say this isn't the only thing that I do do on stream. Uh, I do at the moment do five different art forms or craft forms on stream, but I do them one after another. I don't do them all. I've got to do them all at the same time. That would be really hard anyway. But what I mean is, I'll I'll, I'll do one piece at a time. So I'll do. You know, this uh, punch craft, which will take a week, or has taken almost two weeks um, to do. And then I'll do something else. And then when that's done, I'll do something else. So if I can actually even remember what the five is, and I always seem to stu stumble, but there's this, which is punch craft. Um, I do um, carving, relief carving, um, using uh, using hand chisels. I do um, scraper board, which is a clay board covered with Indian ink, uh, and the image is created by um, scraping the ink away and leaving the white, which can then either be left that way or uh, coloured in using uh, inks to create quite striking pictures, as I've just discovered. Um, I also do pyrography which is um, using a heated tool to well most people think of it as burning wood but we don't actually do any burning at all it colors the wood in in various shades so that's three one two three pyrography scraper board punch craft carving and the the fifth one is jewelry making um using chain mail techniques so um, that actually will be what we do once this particular piece is finished. That's the next craft in the rotation cycle. We'll be doing that either for about a week or until I run out of rings, whichever comes first. <laughs> you return and you f find out. Uh, somewhat a, a somewhat delayed surprise. <laughs> well, you... Um, You've been, you know, you've joined quite a lot, and you're quite helpful. So, 
if you'd rather not be I am quite happy to remove it so I don't uh, but remember you're being trusted if I find I can't trust you it'll disappear <laughs> thank you very much for that uh, Jose that's uh, Josie and um, that's very kind of you I do stream every night of the week subject to uh, you know other things that might stop that like event family events or emergencies but um, from around 8 p.m. in the UK that's 1900 hours GMT uh, and if you're somewhere else and don't know how they translate 8 p.m. was about an hour and three quarters ago so that gives you an indication and uh, I do a lot of other things as well as most of these guys know but I, I don't do them on stream so I do airbrushing, uh, rug making, uh, cross stitch, glass engraving, rotary uh, um, high speed rotary carving, uh, make model model helicopters, <laughs> done one of those on stream and um, Um, she's only just she. I actually, excuse me, Fluffy Twiglet, but I don't actually know whether you are male or female. Not that it particularly matters in the course of you being a mod. Um, they received it earlier tonight, but have been away from the stream for about the past hour and didn't realise. <laughs> so, kind of yes, but kind of no. <laughs> yeah, she. Okay. Can't always tell from the names these days. You, it's we've probably mentioned it in the past, but sieves and my memory are very similar, except sieves hold more. Um, Yeah, I've even got some fuse, fusible beads sat at the other side of the room waiting to be tried. Um, if I can find if I can find a subject that's worthy of doing in fusible beads. It sounds really daft, but I'm a bit like that. I, uh, I'm trying to get over it, but I've got this habit of not wanting to use uh, material. Um, until I've got something worthy of being used for it. It's a bit like I've got some um, uh, canvases for airbrushing but I'm, I, I've not used them up to now because I want it to have an image worthy of being done on canvas and as 3D has reminded me more than once in the past it's easy enough to just gesso over an image if you don't like it but it's kind of um, yeah <laughs> um, you are correct um, Jose but um, Fuffy Twiglet never asked that's one of the reasons why uh, she was considered but Fuffy Twiglet's been around for oh, several months now so um, yeah my memory is more of a calendar, calendar. <laughs> yeah but yes, you're right, uh, Jose. The, um, the thing about uh, asking for a, uh, for a mod uh, means that you've just disqualified yourself in almost every stream that I can think of. Um, the best mods are the ones that don't want to be mods, basically. Yeah! Uh, I think I think you've mentioned it a couple of times as as well. Um, if I, 
actually actually talking about gessoing over things free don't you find if you do that enough on a canvas you actually lose so it lose the uh, lose the canvas texture and it just becomes a flat um, paper like texture <laughs> that was I remember you telling me the story uh, and I, I don't know if you did you did it on stream because you were talking about uh, one of the uh, anime I think um, I kind of had the um, made the some, somebody um, uh, I don't know who it was now made the comment about you you know going to with uh, paint over something as destroying it and I, I know I made the comment that um, well if they wanted to buy it they could save it but then you said um, no once you've made the decision it's it's um, it's done and you explained why <laughs> yeah that's um that's true three d And a lot of people uh, will. I've never been a mod either, um, but I do have that same power now. But a lot of people think it's it's an easy job, and you know, they. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure some some people that want it just so that they can go around banning people, and and um, they kind of um, forget that. The uh, the streamer has the ability to ban them as well. Yeah. I guess yeah. That's... So maybe it's not maybe it's not too bad keeping a canvas until it, I've got something worthy. Of it. I I normally or when I've airbrushed because I'm not doing it at the moment. Um, I've sort of airbrushed onto A3 watercolour paper because the um, paper's a bit easier for me to deal with because I don't hang a lot of my artwork so it just goes in a portfolio uh, and if it's that bad it goes in the round one. Theme Hospital, good evening, welcome to the studio this evening. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, was it you Free, free Reaper the other night uh, on Free Stream? I think we might have to make um, uh, Fear Reaper a, um, a little compilation video free of, of you gessoing over lots and lots of paintings and just keep repeating it. You know, loop, loop, loop the uh, loop the video about six times. <laughs> uh, haven't seen any news today, um, other than Lancashire must boil their hot water, uh, boil their water before drinking it. <laughs> it was for you to find out. Kitty lol. Uh, uh, welcome to the studio and meow to you as well. Oh. Uh, yep, it is indeed about that time, sir. I will probably join uh, you. I'll um, either when I run out of this thread or when I finish this. Uh, I'm not quite sure which. 
<laughs> you can highlight the last one, yeah. Uh, I'm going which way? That way. Ah, I don't know which way I'm going with this. Well, good luck with uh, with Horace this evening. Let's hope um, he gets uh, a good make of and uh, he's able to go on his way. <laughs> I take it you like cats then, uh, kitty lol. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a... Uh, yeah, they have a bit weird, aren't they? Uh, don't really see the point. It's kind of like I don't really see the point in, in the UK when it goes from sort of yeah, Alpha to, to Zulu time, you know, GMT to uh, British summertime. I know we do it, but... What I want to know is what, um, where all this daylight we've saved is. I mean, what bank is it that it's kept in? Because we could do with some of it back. <laughs> I will enjoy your promotion, Fluffy Twiglet. Let's hope there's never any reason for you to need to uh, to use the new powers that you have gained. Now that would be nice. A mod that doesn't have to. And there, I think Freeze just launched his uh, his stream. For those of you who may not have caught the discussion, Free is a an airbrush artist. Uh, 3D block um, who has probably just started his stream or will be doing so very shortly um, he um, does air pushing on stream he's currently doing a xenomorph which if you're not familiar with that is the alien from alien the films and uh, he's recreating it in uh, black and white or white on black technically I guess is what it is uh, and he's well worth checking out He generally streams between about 10 p.m. and midnight-ish, um, five nights a week in the U that's UK time, by the way. Doesn't stream at weekends or when his PC overheats. <laughs> yeah, you have superpowers for me, Twiglet. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Kitty. Uh, when it, whenever either, and it won't be long, whenever either finish this reel um, or I finish this section, uh, which neither of which will be uh, will be very long because it does, uh, we do go through thread fairly quickly. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I will turn it over and show you. We're working on the back at the moment, so it, it looks at. 
Uh, Kitty Lol, thank you very much for following. I really do appreciate you doing that. Thank you very much. And um, I should say, welcome again to the studio. Um, I was saying the back, although the back looks uh, like a fairly decent picture, if a little bit unusual, the front uh, the front actually looks better. Um, The back, the back side actually generally looks like it's got more detail than the front, but the front, uh, the front actually does look better. So we'll see if we can get that. It won't, uh, it won't be long either way. So what I, whilst I could turn it over whilst I'm still doing this and I'm kind of loath to at this point just because Murphy who always comes around at times like this um, is likely to cause me to drop the needle uh, on the floor which is likely to pull out a whole section of thread um, because there's nothing which holds the loops in other than pure friction so I'm um, just a little bit wary of doing that, but it won't be. Uh, it won't be long. Uh, we are motoring through this now, and, and the area is getting smaller all the time. So I'm actually beginning to wonder whether I'm going to have enough thread on this uh, this reel to actually finish. Um, from the point of view, I previously didn't think I would, but um, as we get closer, it um, becomes more possible. it take um ow. it's mm, this particular piece has so far taken 14 24 hours um give or take a little bit because i do have a tendency sometimes whilst talking to stop what i'm doing um but it's we've done this now Seven plus five is um, twelve on twelve streams, and the stream is roughly two hours long. So, so the twenty-four includes tonight, actually. Uh, but this is this is a 12 inch diameter hoop and it's it's completely filled with thread um, so um, yeah some of the smaller hoop for example uh, would be uh, quite a bit quicker uh, whilst it's uh, well it's, it's kind of in proportion it also depends on on just how many like color changes or or, se or size of the individual sections. Um, the more color changes, or the more time I have to stop and reverse the thread direction. Um, so, like small sections, like the wheels, for example, here took an awfully long time, relatively speaking, to do than most of the rest of the picture because there was a lot of um, a lot of small areas and a lot of color changing to do it. Have a two-hour day, and they 
<laughs> You're looking at that timer. What timer? Uh, the the one we were talking about the other night. No, 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 no. I'm um, the only time I've got is the one on OBS telling me how long I've been live. But now I was just doing the calculation in my head. Uh, two hour time to. I remember when I was at college, I was doing a 12 hour day at one point. My first year at uh, college was a 12 hour day. Starting at 8am in the morning, finishing 8pm at night. With classes, two hour classes throughout the day. Um, with an hour off for lunch and about half an hour off for tea. That doesn't actually make sense. I must have had an hour off for tea as well. So a two, two hour, um, two hour day. Mm. Actually, I must admit, I, I purposely selected the 12 hour day um, because it saved me at least another year at uh, college because it was um, uh, a sandwich course. Um, so instead of being three years, it would have been four years. Because I'd, I'd have had to do those modules in the following year. I'm going to run out of this thread with a little tiny bit left to do. I can see it. Twiggler. I um, when I when I did the pyrography of the the fox on the door hanger, uh, we were we were doing it to a timer then. Specifically, I was um, trying to do a piece of artwork within the two-hour stream. Only we did two pieces. Um, and uh, one reason for timing things is to know um, how much they're worth. Um, should I um, should I choose to uh, to sell a piece, or uh, indeed should somebody choose to want to buy one? Because with with most um, most art stuff, it, it's the time taken that um, uh, is the value, not necessarily the materials. And uh, it's uh, it's surprising um, just how long it takes. I mean, even the jewellery, you know, something like a a, a, a a bracelet takes about an hour or so to create so you know if you if you want to uh, to sell any of them then you kind of need to know um, the value and the time is one way of doing it So it's not a case of speed, you know, I have to do something in a particular time. So it's not a countdown time, it's a count up time.
Well, it's getting close. Anybody choosing to lay pets on whether there's enough thread to finish this small section? <laughs> Yeah, I think actually most uh, most people, um, quite a lot of people are. I, mean, I don't know about um, uh, Kitty and uh, um, anybody else who's still around, but um, I think just about everybody else is in one shape or form, an artist of some kind. And of those that uh, didn't know, of course, uh, Fuffy Twiggler is a um, <laughs> is a uh, is an artist. I don't know, Kitty. Are you uh, an artist of any kind? Do you create anything or uh, craft anything? Well, Fuffy Twiggler, unfortunately, I'm afraid to say you are correct. <laughs> um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I'm not sure I'd, uh, I'd have bet the same thing, to be honest. But indeed, we have a little bit of thread left. Uh, that's why I never bet, to be honest, Free Reaper. I, I have been to Las Vegas. I spent three days in Las Vegas and I never bet anything. Uh, you're an illustrator, um, oh yeah, Fuffy Twiggle's an illustrator, yeah. Student, illustr you're still an illustrator, you just don't have as much experience as other people yet, or as much training. So, shall we turn it over and see what it looks like? Jasper! Ah, sorry, I didn't realise you were still in the... Uh, Still here. I um, don't know if you're um, you create art of any kind or or craft. So there we go. I will um, scoot backwards a little bit so you get to see the whole thing. That is a completed in it's two hours tonight, so exactly twenty four hours. Well, exactly ish, kind of, sort of, almost, exactly. 24 hours so there we go and now I'm never going to do a 24 hour stream and create one of these in one go <laughs> just in case that, any, that came to anybody's mind but there we go that's the Mallard an A4 Pacific steam record holder and fluffy is it Yes, fluffy. It's fluffy. <laughs> um, it's it's a bit like a carpet, so it's um, it's not it's sort of firm, fluffy, if you know what I mean, like running your hand over a carpet. Um, so it's not uh, it, it's not completely you know soft and and whatever, you, but uh, and. Uh, the sky around that now, now the steam looks better um, uh, uh, you know the smoke stuff out it looked a little bit odd until I, I finished the whole piece off but uh, really rather really rather pleased with that ah thank you very much you are correct so let's do that um, thank you I do indeed keep forgetting fear reapers just reminding me I've got two small areas down here I have two small areas which I haven't filled in which shows you just how fluffy it is on the other side that you can't actually notice it but you'll see it in a minute when I uh, fill it in so thank you very much for that uh, fear reaper um, we will just re-thread this and actually finish it 
Alava Luna 75 that's an interesting name welcome to the studio thank you very much for following I do appreciate you doing that that's most kind of you so I was about to stop and say that be it but we're actually going to just finish this little, last little bit so I'm thread the needle thread it twice actually thread it down the length and then we thread it through a little tiny hole in the side neither of which will be possible without this threader it's an extremely valuable piece of wire right set the working depth one two three and i've just got two two small areas just down here I've been meaning to do these at just about every stream since I realised I've forgotten to do them. Okay, so that's one of them. Indeed, jewellery tomorrow night. Um, I am hoping... I get an order delivered tomorrow. I've got some very nice little jewels um, that I'm going to make use to make a a, um, a bracelet as a present for my wife, which I hope will be a really pretty bracelet. So that'll be the first thing to do. But then I've got some. Um, some other bracelets that I want to uh, to make so I give my jewellery names um, because quite often they they are inspired by something that the name that I give it uh, sort of brings to mind so um, I'll show you one in a moment just to, to explain it but um, just things like um, tennis wishes for example uh, which is um, done in in purple and green which are the Wimbledon colours uh, or similar to the Wimbledon colours for the Wimbledon Tennis Championships and so um, you know that's the, the name sort of is um, invokes that sort of uh, memory Right, so this one is actually finished. So now we've not forgotten anything. So we've actually, and uh, the the bits now that you couldn't see before, that little bit of green just in there I've done, and there's some green around here now. So those those with the bits of green so it now sort of tightened this area which just looks sort of like a very whitish sort of thickish area now that I've put the green in it um, it tightens up that that detail so that's the finished image um, right I was just going to show an example of um, some of the jewelry so I'll just do that. I've got a couple of pieces here. Um, just in case there's, well, there's a few people following now that may not know what it's um, we're talking about. So, uh, where's it gone? Yeah, there it is. I've got this this one this one here which um, I'll zoom in on on the jewelry so it's possible to see it but this is um, this one's called early morning which doesn't show up very well but uh, and it's called early morning because it's got a real pale blue sky and uh, and it needs focusing 
uh, and and uh, a, you know a pale pink as the sunlight. Um, I'll uh, I'll work out how to position the camera in a minute, uh, and a pale 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 pink of the sunlight. So they're just two blend together as a uh, a sort of a, an early morning, uh, and with the clasp being in sterling silver, you've got the moon. You've got the last of the moon, <laughs> as it. Um, if I can uh, join it together, so you've got the last of the silvery moon of of a of a pale more uh, a pale sunrise you want one fluffy, fluffy twiglet well they are for sale because i can make these uh labu zeal zealoof excuse me if i didn't quite get that right but welcome to the studio thank you very much for uh, for following i do appreciate that um yeah they are i say fluffy twiglet they are for sale if you want one uh Drop me a PM and I'll, I'll give you. I'll work out a price because I haven't worked out a price yet. Um, I'm quite happy to sell. It wouldn't be this one. I'd make one specially. Um, but I'm quite happy to sell them because um, you know, it will at least pay for the materials to continue doing it. Um, so that's uh, that's that one that I made. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you the one that actually started all this because I, I actually uh, I actually built this one from made this one from a kit, and this is this is actually was made as a uh, as a birthday present for my wife, and that's that's got well in theory it's got seven colours in it, but it's actually about uh, it actually works out at about at about fifteen because. There's two sizes of rings used, and they're not quite the same colour. But that's a necklace. And that's uh, that's a nice long necklace with a with a sparkly um, clasp on. Um, actually, this is one I'm going to finish. Um, this is this actually is the same style as that, but a little bit more bold. But I intend with this one turning it into a uh, a bracelet because this one's stretchy, so it doesn't need a clasp. So um, uh, I need a um, the blue rings I need to finish this. I'm hoping are, are coming tomorrow, so it will sort of fasten, and then it will stretch for you to put over uh, over a wrist. So what else have I got in here? Yeah, I've got another one. I haven't, I'm not. The, 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 uh, both of these were kind of. Um, the, the the dark blue always reminds me of sort of a, a lagoon or something like you know a sort of water at sea at night. You know, real dark blue. And the the yellow is kind of like. Um, I'm, I was actually thinking maybe orange. Because what what was coming to mind in doing these is like sunset, or that, you know, you get that really red orange sun just on the horizon where the water's really dark, and this that's kind of what was coming to mind with uh, with these. So I don't actually know what I'll call them, but there'll be something like that sort of um, sort of name. But um, this one is also stretchy, so I was just experimenting with stretchy, uh, and I've. Um, because you know you don't need a clasp, obviously, with a stretchy one. Um, and this one is, is just a little bit. Sh I ran out of, of I say, I ran out of the blue uh, rings. But um, so that was that's another one that uh, I want to I want to finish. And I um, I've just got some red and green uh, stretchy rings uh, coming as well. So they'll. Um, I was thinking of making some Christmas type themed. Um, uh, bracelets up or perhaps a necklace uh, what else um, this one isn't named because this was also uh, the necklace was made as a present for my wife but um, um, I can make others by the way the same uh, and so was this 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 is a bracelet um, for my wife's birthday and that's a nice la you can't see it on camera but it's a lavender and silver colour, sorry, lavender and gold colour. 
Yeah, I do. I love that blue as well. Um, unfortunately, the, this camera's a little bit off because I'll show you these. These are purple. They're a really beautiful, rich purple colour. And uh, unfortunately, the camera shows it as blue, which is a real... Uh, and when I look at this blue, for example, on the camera, um, it's got a it's got a slightly yeah. In real life, that's a really again a really rich blue on the camera. It's it's just changing the colours a little bit, which is a great pity. But um, yeah, I've got some uh, things like I've got whoops there falling out. Some nice green to go with uh, with some red to create some you know like Christmas uh, themed. What else have I got in my box here? Um, one last. I've got the yeah. I've got this one, which is sim. Well, these two are very similar. Um, I think I think I think I think this one off the top of my head is pale sunrise, and that's early morning or early morning mist. I'm not one of them is. I can't remember which one. Uh, both of them were you know inspired by that real early morning sort of thing. Um, I think this one on the left is early morning mist because it's it's thinner, it's sort of you know more wispy uh, looking, but that's uh, the same. It's the same colour again, a pale blue uh, and a pale pink, and again, th but this time I've got a I've got a tea bar clasp on the end, um, uh, representing the moon again, a round moon this time rather than a solid one. Yeah, a little bit. Well, I'm, to be honest, I have real fun with these. I really do. I mean, you can even get really, really simple chains. I mean, this is about as simple as you get. Is this, um, and it, it is well, the colour two in one. And this is this has got a. It's actually got a fill. Well, the colour filled gold clasp on it. Um, and it's just a, a just a two in one chain, just a very simple chain. But these work great for things like an anklet. Um, although this is a bracelet. Um, and uh, uh, this is yellow rather uh, whilst the clasp is uh, sorry, and just to say the, the material this is all aluminium. But it's anodized aluminium, so it doesn't tarnish. Um, and uh, this being a filled gold uh, clasp it true shouldn't tarnish um, but that's uh, just a, a nice simple sort of uh, fairly delicate uh, sort of chain it's quite large rings but um, I love playing with these things ah. yep here's an here's an anklet again with a f this has got a rose gold filled clasp but this is this is an anklet so it's a bit bigger than time bit bigger than the bracelet and I haven't I haven't I, I, actually I've got another lagoon inspired one which is a necklace uh, hang on I'll just get it I'm showing off There we go. Oh, it's not showing the pink. That's a pity. The um, these are blue, obviously blue. It's that lovely deep blue, uh, and the intermediate rings are pale, pale pink again. And uh, th th this is the one that triggered that moonlight. Um, uh, I saw an image. Um, and I can't remember what it was, which was sort of uh, uh, you know, a dark, it, it was a lagoon with the sun, uh, a morning sunlight, so you had the pale pink uh, just popping up, and that um, that inspired this particular colour range. And this is a necklace. 
and so you you really like what the um the anklet you love that one <laughs> this is pale pink but uh, rather than purple but you you could have one of these in purple um and I've got some other things, bits and pieces in there. I, I experiment a bit, so there's things like uh, just short lengths of chain in different uh, different weaves, just practicing or or seeing what they look like. This um, this is similar to a weave that's called Byzantine, but it actually isn't. It's um, uh, this is called Turkish um, Turkish round, but it's. Um, it's sort of well it's round <laughs> uh, what else have I got in here bits and pieces like that uh, here's a, a smaller version of the uh, of the blue so just um, just done in, in using smaller rings so you know you, in quite a few cases you can do this you can go from big you know and get small versions of big things as big versions of small things um, Here's something that sort of sort of Christmas inspired, just a small red green chain. This one is probably more suited to a so this particular size more suited to an earring rather than a bracelet because it's not flexible enough for a bracelet. Might work as a necklace, but not uh, unfortunately as a bracelet. Um, little bits. And whilst all of this is um, is aluminium rings, the, this one here is t this one here is titanium, and these are really hard to work. Gotta go. Okay, Jasper. Well, have a good evening, and uh, thank you very much. And uh, hope I'll see you again. Should be making some of these tomorrow if you want to drop in. So, yeah, titanium, small section of titanium chain. And uh, that, for example, is exactly the same as that, just in different size rings. So um, it's a bit hard to show the, the different relative sizes, but it's about half the width. <laughs> um, so kind of just, I just have fun with these chains and. Uh, as I say, if anybody is interested in having um, buying any of these, I'm quite happy to uh, uh, to sell them uh, different colours. Yeah, these are just some colours I've put together. This is really this is this is um, what's this called? This is called um, round mail, and it, it is really quite quite a round um, round piece. Um, but uh, hmm. my box is just about empty, but. Uh, I'll just give you an idea of the colours. Um, if I get the right box. Which is that one? I can show you just some of the, well, I'll show you the colours that are in here. Um, I will zoom no what? There's um two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen different colours. I'll, take, I'll open the lid and hope I don't drop these. But I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come in close so you can see the colours. So we've got a silver, white. This camera doesn't like certain colours, and it does. That flashing you're seeing is the camera. I'll try and uh, move enough far away so it doesn't bother it. So we've got silver, white. This is like a very pale mint green. It's called sea foam. We've got yellow, and that's a, that's this one is really yellow. Um, we've got a pale blue, which is called sky blue. Unfortunately, it looked, you know, as I say, the camera doesn't. So it's, it's a pale blue, but it's it's a slightly greenish blue. Uh, we've then got these really rich purple that I'm afraid shows up as blue on the camera, but um, they they are oh. Um, Cadbury's chocolate purple I think somebody's described it as it's it's a really sort of rich purple 
that you might get on on ropes and things like that um that's an orange this is a pale purple <laughs> so that's a paler version of that one um we've then got this is called champagne so it's sort of a, a, a well like champagne it's that sort of uh, slightly brown um bronzy looking color uh, we then have gold which is kind of like a 20 carat gold color we then have pale pink these um this dark blue it's actually called royal blue um but dark blue then the the green if i can work it out to move this uh, a red a, a deep red We've then got bronze, which is sort of a darker version of the champagne, so it is like a bronze colour. Uh, then there's this, which is called black eye, so it's a bit like gunmetal, but shiny. And then finally, we've got in this one, we've got black. Um, so they they are really all the colours. Now I, I will say, if anybody is interested in me having any of these. These colours are batch colours. They vary. Um, sometimes uh, quite a bit. Um, and, and I don't know if this will show up on, on camera, but um, I'll try and show you the two, two pale pinks side by side. So, on screen now are the two pale pinks it's not showing up really well but you can see how the one on the left looks lighter than the one on on the right um, assuming you're seeing it the same way around I am which I think you are so this is the right and this is the left it's it's paler um, the pink shows that particularly the other colors um, the pale green um, or the sea form as it's called that seems to vary a, a little bit as well in colour um, so it, it's you know there is some variability in it and actually I do have one brand new colour which I just got a sample of today just came in today's post which is this one it's called a dark rose it's sort of like a dark pink colour so that's one for me to experiment with so yes there's uh, uh, so many colours so many choices too many choices to make um, but uh, so I've got lots to play with uh, in terms of, of rings and I say if anybody is interested I am quite happy to make some I could even make them on, uh, on stream and uh, just drop me a PM message because I haven't worked out what any of the pricing on any of these would be uh, just yet um, so I'll, I'll, I'm in the process of doing that as I say it would be nice if um, if people are interested if I can if I am able to uh, uh, to sell some of these and it will pay for some of the art materials uh, and, and, and buying more rings so that I can do more anyway it's now half past 10 it's about half an hour past my uh, finishing time but i've had fun showing off <laughs> uh, let me put them away they're more for tomorrow of course so i've got a handful of you might think these are heavy but they're as light as well they're lighter than a block of chocolate you get to see how they're all made tomorrow night but uh, the stab of this particular show of course is the locomotive let's zoom that back out turn it around the right way and we'll leave that as the as the image for uh, for the stream tonight thank you all for watching it has been great fun having you around and um, I'll just do the the my usual advert and that is if anybody is uh, watching and isn't following then if you're interested 
I would certainly appreciate you following and thank you to everybody who has done so tonight. I do really appreciate you doing that. Thank you very much. Um, I'm also available. Well, I'm also available. I am on Twitter as well, but I don't tweet much. Um, just stream starts and, and art related uh, items if I come across them. Um, as it's been said earlier this evening, I tweet when I go live, not when I have my breakfast. Uh, the details will be on the end plate in a moment. They're also below the stream window, but it's at Zaragan Art. Fairly simple, really. Uh, on the other hand, if you'd just like to try and catch me on the next stream, which will be tomorrow night, it will be from approximately 8pm uh, UK time, 1900 hours GMT, or about two and a half hours ago was 8 o'clock, so whatever time you've got on your clocks, wherever you are, two and a half hours ago was 8pm in the UK. That time, tomorrow, and uh, seven nights a week at the moment at that time. Uh, and Ibrox7, thank you very much for uh, dropping in and uh, saying uh, hello and goodbye. So thank you all again. Hope to see you tomorrow when we'll be doing some jewellery. Have fun. See you later. Bye-bye.